Well, the amygdala is um, a small region of the brain. It's in what's called the temporal lobe of the brain. If we divide the, the cerebral hemispheres into the four major lobes, occipital, temporal, parietal, and frontal, it's in the temporal lobe, which is under the temporal bone, which is behind your ear. Um, and the amygdala would be located in a point at a point where a line that goes through your eye and through your ear intersect, intersect in, in your brain. So imagine like someone has shot an arrow through to your eye and one, another one into your ear, where those two come together would be roughly where it is, and on both sides of the brain, of course, because most structures, in fact, all structures are, are bilateral in that sense. So it's, um, you know, it's sometimes um, referred to as an almond or an almond-shaped structure which is a bit of a misnomer because um, there's one part of it that's almond-shaped, and that caught the attention of early anatomists, and so they named this almond-shaped structure the amygdala. But as the amygdala began to be defined uh, more broadly, it, it includes a lot of structures other than that little almond-shaped uh, piece. Um, it's most commonly associated with fear, although that's not its only function. It's its most uh, heavily studied function, and the reason for that is that uh, it's much easier to study fear than other emotions. Uh, things that are, are bad have more weight uh, than things that are good, in a sense. I mean, you can put off eating, drinking, sex, whatever, for uh, an indefinite amount of time, but you have to respond to danger immediately. Um, you know, you don't find great novels about happy subjects. It's always about, you know, the bad stuff. And it, it's sometimes said that there's this negative bias in emotion, uh, which is that uh, most research on emotion is about the negative stuff, but the fact is that uh, negative stuff turns out to be the most important for survival in a sense in terms of immediacy and having to respond to it. So some of the key interconnections of the amygdala, and the, these connections actually define what it does in a sense, at least with respect to fear, the amygdala gets sensory information directly from the various sensory systems that process the external world. So the, the visual system, the auditory system, olfactory, uh, touch, pain, and so forth. All of these kind of come together or converge in the amygdala. And then the amygdala connects on the output side with all the systems involved in emotional reactivity. So uh, when you encounter a sudden danger, you might freeze. Uh, your blood pressure and heart rate begin to rise, stress hormones are released, all these things happen as a result of outputs of the amygdala. So the amygdala you can think of as kind of this, uh, you know, this circle with one input coming in being the, the or the input coming in being a sensory uh, flow of sensory information from the external world, and then outputs being uh, connections to systems involved in controlling the responses. So, but we have to expand those inputs, so it's getting not just one sensory input, but all sensory inputs, so each sensory system is coming in. And it doesn't stop there, because in addition to getting information from sensory systems, it also gets information from higher order systems, like uh, the prefrontal cortex and uh, uh, higher order association areas involved in, in various kinds of integrative activities in the cortex. What it does is a function of what connections it has. So because it has connections with all these sensory systems, it can take in information from the environment of a variety of types and uh, use that information. And so if, if, um, you know, if a, a sound in the, in the external world occurs right before um, something painful happens, you associate that sound with the painful event and that sound will then later trigger a protective defense response. But if the sound occurs just before um, food, when you, you're hungry, then the sound will be associated with, with um, that kind of a positive or repetitive event. And so what the amygdala is doing is forming associations between random or neutral external stimuli and the kinds of uh, reinforcing events that will stamp in those uh, uh, experiences in a, in a stronger way. So it's, it's creating these what's called Pavlovian associations, you know, stimulus one plus stimulus two. Uh, if one of those is in a, in a biologically significant stimulus, then the other one will acquire some kind of biological significance itself, whether it's positive or negative. Now that information can then be used, and this is sort of what I think you were referring to in terms of adaptive behavior. So that 
CSUS relationship or say uh, sound food relationship can then be used to guide instrumental behavior which is goal-directed behavior. So if in the past you've um, obtained food at a certain location, the stimuli that are proximal to that location serve as conditioned stimuli and you know are reinforcing to you because they're close to the actual goal and they take you towards the goal. Same thing happens with aversive stimuli, the, it's just that it works in the opposite way.